this idea of intrinsic security is something that really appeals to me as a former CISO. Um, the idea that we could somehow build security into the very building blocks that we're using uh, in the infrastructure side, but also on the cultural side, means that we have a greater chance of, of running a successful business, right? I want to give you my perspective on the cultural side uh, of building the security team and interacting with the business based on my experience at my former employer. Um, I was the CISO at uh, the largest federally registered investment advisor in the US uh, for nearly 20 years. Um, we gave services to over 10 million individuals with over a trillion dollars in assets. But I started about 20 years earlier than that when I was employee number 19. I was hired on as the IT guy and I realized we're working at a financial services company and this is people's financial data that we have to deal with. Somebody's got to worry about security. The problem is that it was an add-on, right? It wasn't number one priority for the company. We were a startup. Number one priority was running the business and getting it off the ground, getting new clients, right? And accumulating enough assets so that we could then do the more interesting things. Security was something that was after the fact and thought of later. And when you're that one sole security person who's being told you've got to protect this data, and somebody comes to you and says, I need access to this data, or give me access to this code, or let's bring this third party app, your first response is, best way to protect is to say, uh uh, no way. And this is how we ended up with the reputation of being the department of no, right? Everyone knows this kind of thing with the security department. No, you can't do that. No, not right now. No, production just blew up. You can't do that because I'm too busy fighting this particular fire, right? But I knew there was no way that we could sustain that for very long. We needed to get away from that notion of saying no to everything. We had to become part of the business in order to enable it. So a number of things changed. Thankfully, as we grew, we got clients. And the clients cared about security. And when the clients care about security, guess what? So does the C-suite, right? Suddenly, I got budget. At about the same time, managed security service providers came into being and, and they started being actually effective. Now, we were a startup back in the late 90s. There are the equivalents now of third parties that can help you do security, offload some of those more mundane things. For us, it was log monitoring and network monitoring, things like that. That helped me and my team focus a little bit more proactively on things. And we got to the point where we could start saying yes to the company. But unfortunately, resources are still tight. So we could say yes, but not as expansively as we wanted to. It was yes, but. Yes, you're going to have to wait a while. Yes, but we have to test this thing first. We have to build this automation or write this script by hand or something like that. So it was still very difficult, but we started moving forward and we started building in more automation. Some of the security tools were sort of getting better at this point. Um, slowly but surely, we were able to say yes more and more. And the great thing about being able to say yes is that there's a snowball effect. When we say yes, the company wants to work with us more, we can build security in earlier, we get to say yes more often. Right? And then we can start building security into our processes, into our project plans, not just for IT or not just for the code that we're building, but actually for part of the business as well. And so this is when I ended up being able to uh, partner with parts of the business like the head of compliance and our chief counsel. We went to the head of HR and said, look, security needs to be part of our culture. We need to actually be up in front of people when they first join our company and talk to them about it. So I had the privilege of standing up in front of people when they joined the company and saying, welcome to Financial Engines. I'm the head of security. I'm really not that scary. And in fact, I just deputized you all as junior security people, right? You're now part of our security organization. And I want to rely on you to do the right thing because it is the right thing for us, for our clients, for each other, right? And people get it. People understand it and they want to be involved. And then they know if they see something wrong, they know who to talk to, right? This was when I was able to start establishing these uh, contacts with people early on and create security champions within the company. That empowered security even more. That meant that I could go to, for example, I had a meeting with the head of architecture for our engineering group, and I sat down with him and I said, look, I want to show you some things about security that you've never seen before. Let me show you cross-site scripting. I showed him a vulnerability on our website where some bad party could come in using our website, do something really nasty. He was shocked. He was like, we don't want this to happen. This can't happen. What do we do about it? So then I get this conversation with him about, OK, let's develop secure coding practices. How can we build this in to our coding process and make sure it doesn't happen because the developers want to solve this problem up early? Okay? 
So that's when we became the department of yes and. Yes, you can do this. Yes, you can have this access. And we're going to help you. We're going to be experts that you can rely upon. So I created then what I like to call the center of excellence, where the security team, guess what? They know where all the skeletons are buried. They know where the data goes. They know the architecture of the application. They know the network. They know the third party vendors, because we reviewed them. That was all part of our organization. We could come and help smooth things along and be this trusted partner of the business at this point. Another thing happened about this time uh, that allowed us to be even better at security, and that was things like infrastructure as code, things like Puppet Chef and Ansible that allowed us to create these secure building blocks that we could hand off to the development teams and to the IT teams that let them play. We'd hand them the building blocks, they'd do whatever they wanted to, and we knew that zero trust was built into it, that the right privacy and, and uh, auditable things were built into it, and we could focus on other things at this point. So this is when we sort of hit the hell of ground of the department of yes, please. Not only can we say yes, but yes, you actually want to work with us. We became this important part of the organization, actually added value to the business, right? And this is when I think uh, a CISO has a chance to really shine. Um, CISO is somebody that I think speaks multiple languages fluently, speaks security and IT and engineering and HR and risk and privacy and business and actually can assess all these things for business risk and speak the right language to each other department and tie things together in a meaningful way for all those teams at once, right? So this is where I could look at, for example, we were regulated by the SEC, and the SEC does a really great thing. Every year they publish their exam priorities. Sounds really dull, right? But for us, it meant we knew up front what the regulators wanted to see in re registered investment advisors. And I could look at it and say, you know what? We do all these things over here, got some gaps over here, here's a project plan, hand it off to IT, hand it off to our chief counsel. Everyone knew what they would do if the regulators showed up. And we were all confident that we were doing the right thing at that point, right? This is also a time when I could reach out to clients and talk to them about their concerns about security and privacy up front. And I would turn them into, you know, look at our controls, write up a white paper that says, this is what we're doing on your behalf. And I handed it off to the sales team. The sales team could use those white papers to reduce the sales cycle, right? Actual impact by the security team on the business directly. So the thing about running such an effective security team is that people still come to the company with their preconceived notions about security departments. So even though we have this department of yes, and everybody knows it, some people still come like they're not quite sure. And I distinctly remember this product manager, she was relatively new. I'd met her at New Hire Orientation. I'd seen her socially in the halls. We got along just fine. She came to me with a project plan and said, I need to sit down with you and go over this. It's possibly going to involve privacy and security. And I need your opinion, need your blessing. I sat down and chatted with her for a bit. I said, hey, you know, this is great. And in fact, here's some other things that I think you can use that will make this even better. And she sat back and she looked kind of like a little weird. And I said, well, what's wrong? And she said, you know, I was really nervous about having this meeting with you. I said, well, why? She said, well, you know, because I knew you'd say no. 